Welcome back to Crystal Clear. I'm Ashrik Vox, and Cartoon Network has launched the official website for Steve Universe the movie. And if you're thinking, all right, this website has nothing new to tell us, it has absolutely zero hints for the movie, think again. This website does provide a clue, or maybe even confirmation, that hints towards the mysterious identity of this brand new gem. So we're going to dive in and break it all down. And of course, spoiler warning in case you don't want to know Jack Squat, we'll see you around. Actually, before we dive in, I just want to address something important with this video. Look, Steven Universe content is nothing new on YouTube by this point. There are plenty of channels within the cartoon community who are huge fans of the show and thus produce videos on them. I mention this because I've noticed a nasty habit. If I cover a particular topic that happens to be covered by another content creator, more often than not, that other content creator gets blamed for stealing from me, which I find kind of baffling, especially being three years deep into all of this. You guys may not be aware of this if you don't follow us on social media, but the cartoon community is really close. I'm really good friends with the other content creators who cover Steven Universe. I'll address this now because I believe Toon Ruins is also covering this topic, as we've discussed the website a day prior to me recording this. And yeah, she's free to cover this as well. Anyone is. Just because multiple creators cover the same topic, or have the same idea, doesn't mean the video as a whole is a one-on-one -on -one imitation. Whereas one common idea may be shared, there could be a multitude of differing opinions and factors, thus giving different variations of the same theory, for example. Or when it comes to news like the movie, multiple channels may cover that topic at the same time, because it's news. Just because they're a day or two apart doesn't mean anyone stole from one another. So whether if it's Toon Ruins, Cartoon Universe, Swaggy Thunder, Slides of Otaku, Rose's Universe, anyone who talks about the series, just keep in mind we're all a posse. These are all people I adore and respect. And if you haven't already, do yourselves a favor to subscribe to all the aforementioned. Check out their content, even if it is something like a theory that I may have already covered. Get their own take on it. Alright, with that out of the way, let's actually dig into this website. First firing up this page, we're greeted with a brief synopsis of the film, with a backdrop that's more or less the film's poster. Already the first sentence is very telling. In his first musical TV movie, Steve Universe thinks his time to fame the Earth is over, but when a new gem comes to beat City seeking revenge, Steven faces his biggest challenge yet. What we want to focus on here is first musical TV movie. This is not the first website to refer to the movie as a first. Other sources and press releases have also cited such a thing. By frequently reassuring us that this is the first Steve Universe movie, Cartoon Network may be implying that they may have plans for another down the road. That maybe when Steve Universe as a franchise finally calls it quits, we'll get a second, final movie that's the end to everything in the series. While I hope they don't go into production for another movie so soon, as with the movie wrapping up on post-production, check out our video on that, Rebecca Sugar no longer has to work on both the show and the movie all at the same time. For her to only get a little break, readjusting to the normalcy of being under constant stress from just one thing, it would kinda suck to know that she would have to go right back into her old routine. Show, movie, show, movie, 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 show. Any schedule like that would drive me bonkers. Rebecca Sugar is a very strong individual. But as a show drawing a lot of of inspiration from various anime, with how many shonen franchises received multiple films, it's only natural Steve Universe would follow in these steps. Hell, maybe that's how Cartoon Network plans to keep Steve Universe going after the show itself properly concludes, making annual Steve Universe films either once a year or one every two years. Just because there's no more room for an overarching story doesn't mean there isn't room for 90 minute one off stories. And with the rich world Steve Universe has, I can't complain about this. Alright, rounding out the synopsis Steve Universe, a 2018 Peabody Award and 2019 GLAAD Media Award recipient follows Steven and the Crystal Gems, a team of magical aliens who fight to protect the Earth. Steven is the half-gem, half-human son of the Crystal Gems' late leader, Rose Quartz, and local musician, Greg Universe. Steven's friends and family support him as he grows into his powers and figures out how to be himself. So yes, Cartner gives two big pats in the back, acknowledging the two recent awards the show has snagged, and rightfully so, before giving us a general feel for the series, but referring to Rose Quartz as her alter ego, and not her true identity, Pink Diamond, because why would you do that to a newcomer of the show? Actually, getting into Steve Universe after 2019 is going to be very hard, as the show is going to be in time skip mode, but for anyone to follow it, they would have to follow this epic overarching mystery. But Steven doesn't look nearly as cool, but they had to constantly dodge spoilers about Pink Diamond and White Diamond and all the new fusions. Ah, may the god of their choice have mercy on their souls. Moving on, the website then implements the trailer, nothing new we haven't seen before, but you're also able to 
check out the Comic Con performance for True Kind of Love, the sneak peek trailer at the Cooniverse Behind the Scenes documentary for the film, a quote unquote series recap, which is just a trailer for Diamond Days. So it does fill you in on a lot of the important elements of the series besides, uh, you know, everything that happened on Homeworld, the music video for the extended theme song, We Are the Crystal Gems, a top gem fusions that include Change Your Mind, and a compilation of the best fight scenes that were already uploaded to Cartoon Network's YouTube channel. And writing things out, we have last year's Comic Con music video for a live Stronger Than You performance. All right, not too shabby. There's nothing that we can really nitpick and decipher from here, but at the same time, we don't have to. Next up is the character section, which I believe provides two major clues to the film that can also support our major theories surrounding the film. More so, the identity of the villain. First, we have Steven with a render of his time skip self, looking all cool. Steven is the youngest member of the Crystal Gems, defenders of the Earth. He's half human, half gem, and all heart. He's the best at bringing people together, both to celebrate the joy in life and to offer help to anyone who needs it. When he's not saving the Earth, Steven loves making music and having fun with his friends. This excels wonderfully at giving us a feel for the show. Almost every plot point in the series is a result of Steven bringing people together, and his ultimate goal at the end of the day was bringing everybody together, reuniting Earth and Homeworld, but under a different, less genocidal set of rules. Next, we have Garnet. Garnet is the leader of the Crystal Gems. She's a fusion of two gems, Ruby and Sapphire, who love each other and want to stay fused all the time. Sapphire's ability to see the future and Ruby's intense determination combine into Garnet's power to see multiple futures that the Crystal Gems can fight to achieve. This power and the strength that comes from the love she embodies makes Garnet the ultimate leader. So one thing, this synopsis infers that Garnet is still leader of the Crystal Gems, which makes sense as during the time skip, it seems as if Steven was off dismantling the Empire. So he couldn't have led the Crystal Gems. But a part of season five, especially with the heart of the Crystal Gems arc, was putting Steven in the role of a leader. The Crystal Gems falling apart and Steven being the one to group them all back up, making them stronger than ever to face off against the Diamonds. So Garnet still being referred to as the leader in the synopsis is kind of heartbreaking. Her summary also touches on future vision, but not just a standard future vision that Sapphire possesses, Garnet's in particular, that can see multiple outcomes of multiple situations. This is a rather specific ability to include, so it has me thinking that future vision will be pivotal in the film's story. That Garnet might look into multiple outcomes of the Earth's fate. Maybe the film will go all Avengers on us, where Garnet sees only one possible timeline where the Earth survives and they all become victorious, but it might be at a cost. Next up, we have Pearl. Pearl has been with the Crystal Gems the longest. When Steven's mother, Rose Quartz, started the rebellion against Homeworld to protect the planet Earth, Pearl was by her side. Pearl can be a bit of a know-it-all when it comes to the Crystal Gems' history. After all, she was there. Pearl loved Rose deeply and was completely devoted to the Crystal Gems. Now with Rose gone, Pearl is determined to protect Rose's son, Steven Universe. I'm happy this website kind of recasts Pearl's arc perfectly. She loved Rose Quartz, but she accepts that Rose is gone, and now all she wants to do is protect Steven. However, addressing that love for Rose may be very important for the other clues that are within the website that we're actually just about to get to. We just need to shed light on Amethyst. Amethyst is the rowdiest of the Crystal Gems. She and Steven have a special bond. She may be 5,000 years older than him, but they were both created on Earth and have both been Crystal Gems all their lives. Amethyst loves having fun, eating, playing video games, wrestling, shape-shifting, and generally doing whatever she wants. But she knows how to be serious when she has to be, and will drop everything to be there for Steven. Now, this next page is the most telling. Rose Quartz or Pink Diamond. Rose Quartz was the original leader of the Crystal Gems. She's also the rebellious alter ego of Pink Diamond, one of the four rulers of Homeworld. Pink Diamond was sent to conquer Earth, but when she snuck down to the planet's surface disguised as Rose Quartz, she decided to remain on Earth as Rose and fight to protect organic life. Six thousand years after the rebellion, she gave up her physical form in order to create her half-human child, Steven Universe. So what's interesting about this page is the fact that it's even included, because the only page after this is the villain. So why include Steven, Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, and then besides the villain, only include Rose Quartz and Pink Diamond? Specifying the twist of Rose Quartz being Pink Diamond when the rest of the website tried to avoid mentioning Pink Diamond's name at all. Why leave out Peridot, Lapis Lazuli, Bismuth, the other diamond? Diamonds, Lars, Sadie, any of the other entire list of characters we know are in the film. So why did they include this page? Well, let's read the next one. Mystery Gem. 
She's out to seek revenge on Steven and his friends. Who is this mysterious new gem? Also, one more thing, there's a Witch Crystal Gem Are You quiz they linked to, which is actually just a dove quiz they had a few months ago, but it's really fun. Check it out. Let me know who you get in the comments. Anywho, despite having so many other stills they could use for a character, or maybe just even an original render, like the rest of the website includes, whoever designed this website opted to have her silhouette as the picture. At this point, it feels like to me they want to keep the identity of this gem a secret, because her name will shock us to our core. Which is why I'm a bit more doubtful of the gems like Morganite, because knowing she's just a cut-up gem on Homeworld feels less special, and not worth all of this hype, specifying that she's seeking revenge on Steven and his friends, and including the page of Rose Quartz and Pink Diamond, these three aspects may all be clues that this new gem is indeed a Pink Diamond 2.0, perhaps being Cubic Zirconia. This isn't saying I won't accept the other gems at all. If she ends up being something like a Morganite or a Bixie Bite or anything else has been suggested, I think that'll be fine. Regardless, I think Morganite is a cool name for an antagonist, even if that is just an actual gemstone already. Obviously, I think the main takeaway without fitting into any theories is that they're strongly trying to indicate that this gem has a connection to Pink Diamond and is angry at Steven for one reason or another. The reason most likely being that Steven changed the Diamond's minds. He made Era 3 an Era of Peace. He put an end to colonization. He successfully caused Gemkind to abandon its original vision. And that might be what ticked this gem off. That alone is a good enough motivation to the point where she doesn't need to be a Pink Diamond 2.0. I just think that general concept and idea would add a bit more layers and make this antagonist oddly feel a bit more unique despite being the intended replica of a different gem we've already know. People have also thrown out the suggestion that she could be a Rose Quartz, but I feel as if she's just too far removed from Pink Diamond's original masquerade as Rose Quartz that someone on Homeworld had to notice that, hey, that's not a Rose Quartz at all. After the character section, we have a music session that plugs true kind of love. I'm still planning on doing a breakdown of those lyrics, seeing how they correlate to the movie, Soundtrack Volume 1 that you can stream, Soundtrack Volume 2, the karaoke album, and the Steve Universe podcast, which you guys need to listen to. I would love to see that come back for both the movie and the upcoming season of the series. And after that, they have merch and games. Although I'm hoping a merch section on this site for the movie is Cartoon Network's way of telling us, yes, there will be merch specifically tied to the film. Please, give me Steven's jacket. I like it a lot. I would like to acquire one. And then they have a section for all the games that you can buy. I still want to do a full breakdown of Phantom Fable as well, but maybe the window closed on that? Let us know in the comments. And on that note, these are all my thoughts and I would love to hear yours. What do you think? Does this website indicate that this new villain could be a replacement to Pink Diamond? Do you believe there is a correlation with her and Pink Diamond at all? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Autric Fox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Vox, signing out.